In the previous video, we have made our biome generator use chain of responsibility pattern to deploy different types of blocks depending on the Y value of our terrain and the surface height or other, uh, our ground position. I would like to change it by making some of those tiles to appear to be rock. So basically, I would like to have patches of rocks around our map uh, instead of only having the uh, grass and dirt tiles and sand tiles. So that's what we are going to work on in this video. So let's start by creating a new C Sharp script in our folder uh, block layers, and we are going to call it, it Stone Layer Handler. Okay, and let's open it up in Visual Studio. Okay, so again, this will be extending not mono behavior but block layer handler. So we are going to delete the update and start, and we need to right click quick actions and implement the abstract try handling. And before we can use it, we are going to have two variables, two fields here in our stone layer handler, and those will be a public float stone threshold, which will be in range of 0 to 1. And this will be a threshold that we use to define if the noise that we generate, a new noise value for our stone layer, that will be used to define if we should swap the currently placed block types to the stone block. And to calculate the noise, we are going to provide a new noise settings so that we can tweak how our stone appears on our map. Okay, so now, knowing this, uh, first thing that we are going to do is in our uh, try handling, we are going to have a condition. So instead of processing each Y position, we are going to calculate uh, one version of the stone and noise for a single Y position, which will be the position of our chunk data world position dot Y. So we need to know if Y is greater than the surface height noise. So we, if we are considering the air block, then we want to simply return because we are not swapping the air blocks into our stone blocks. Now, if we are past this condition, we will want to set our stone noise settings dot world offset to the map seed offset. Now we could probably do it a bit better because right now we are setting it per every x and z coordinate. But for now, this will be the solution. And next, we are calculating a new noise which I have called terrain height, and this will be the terrain height for our stone layer. And we are going to use my noise dot octave perlin noise. And we are passing not only the x value, but also we need to transform it to the world position. In this case, we need to add the chunk dot world position dot x and y to those and z to those coordinates. And we are passing the stone noise settings at the end. And this way we have our noise for the stone layer. Now, since we are only calculating this for a single y value, we are going to have a loop to loop for each value of the from the bottom of the chunk to the end position. For now, uh, if we have uh, if we are considering the top chunks, we are going to have the end position will be equal to surface height noise, so to the height of our terrain. But in case our chunk the world position x is less than zero, we will want to set it to the appropriate value. So this will be the chunk position chunk world position y plus chunk data dot height if you are calculating the stone values for the bottom chunks so currently it would set all the chunks below the terrain to be stone but of course we can tweak it later for now this is for the test purposes so that we can create those patches of stone so now we have our end position all we need is to check if our terrain height which is the noise so maybe let's call it stone noise this will be better so if our stone noise is greater than the threshold that is the stone threshold this means that we want to substitute all the tiles from the bottom of our chunk towards the end position so we are going to look for i equals chunk uh, data dot world position to y i less or equal to end position i plus plus and we are going to calculate the position and we are going to set the chunk uh, block to be stone type on this position and we need to return true now if we have a next layer we could of course take this uh, return value and put it inside this if statement and else return false 
and this will be a safer approach because now we are going to have a way to run the next layer. So now, with all this code ready, let's go back to Unity. Now, we are going to create in a biome generator another empty object, let's call it stone, or maybe additional layers. And inside these additional layers, we are going to add a new game object, and let's call it stone layer. So I have called this uh, additional layers because we are not going to run this with all the existing layers. Let's assign our stone layer to our stone layer game object, stone layer handler. And now, one thing that we have is the next layer, which will be empty. Second thing is the stone threshold, and the third this is the settings. So I think in our scripts folder we have our noise settings. Let's select those and let's click Ctrl D to duplicate those and let's drag them into our block layer. Let's rename this to be Stone Layer Noise Settings. Okay. I think we are going to create a separate folder for those. For now, what I want to change is the octaves. Let's set it to be 1 so we have a shorter calculation. And let's change the offset. So let's set the offset to be something else. I'm going to set it to 3200 and maybe 100 on Y. And basically this is it for what we need to change in our uh, settings. We are going to select our stone layer and we are going to assign this uh, stone layer noise settings to it. And last thing that we are going to do is have to run it through, through our biome generator script. So let's open our biome generator script. And here we are going to add at the top a new public list of block layer handler and we are going to call it additional layers or additional layer handlers okay now we are going to assign here our stone layer and we are going to run through those layers below our for loop so we can currently delete those this commented code because we are not going to need it after we finish this for loop we are going to call our additional layers, so for each, tab tab to create it from the snippet, var layer, tab to move to the in uh, collection, and we are going to call additional layers handlers. And now we are going to take each layer and we are going to call layer dot handle, and we can pass the same data that we have passed above. So this is our second pass through our terrain, and we are going to make sure that we pass the y value as our uh, data dot position world position dot y okay i don't think that we are using actually this y value for anything but better to be safe that uh, we can later improve the code and take this uh, y value as the input let's save it and let's go back to unity okay so now if we press play or actually I haven't assigned the stone layer, so let's select our additional layer handlers uh, list. And let's add an element using the plus icon, and let's assign our stone layer. Now, if you press play, we should see that we are going to generate our map, and some parts of our map will become stone. And what we can do to modify how much of the stone is there, we can increase our threshold, let's increase it to something like 0.6. Let's regenerate our map. And there is less stone. Let's set it even higher. Uh, 0 0.64. Let's regenerate. And you can see that a bit less stone is created. And the stone layers are created, or, or the stone blocks are created even underwater. Uh, this is what I came up with for adding the stone to our voxel world. And of course, you can tweak the settings for your noise values. To make it look a bit different, you can increase the octaves, but this will increase the time to calculate the noise values. But if we generate it, you can see that this is um, less visible, that's why I have uh, decreased the uh, value of the octaves. You can play around with those settings to find out what works best for you. For me, I think one octave works, works best because it creates these big patches of stone now this is all great, but still our landscape, I think it could look a bit better. That's why in the next video, I'm going to explain the domain wrapping technique so that we can create a more jagged mountains and more steep mountains so that our terrain looks a bit more natural. So next video, we're going to again improve on the look of our terrain. See you there.